It's the bat. <coughs> my asthma is slowly killing me, but it's okay. Hey, what's up guys? My name's John, and today I'm gonna break down this animation for you. So at first glance, this might seem like it's kind of a difficult animation, but really it's a lot of position and rotation keyframes. We're gonna move around anchor points to sell the orbiting effect. And yeah, if you're just starting out in After Effects, this really shouldn't be a hard tutorial to follow. With that being said, I'm not gonna rebuild the whole animation in this video because that would take a really long time. So I broke it down into three portions. Um, Will, so since the last time I recorded this video, uh, I've got a haircut. It's been about a week and a half. Started school. Currently extremely stressed out about school. But, uh, everything's gonna be just fine. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna break down for you guys is how I created the stars. Um, that cool star fly through thing at the beginning. Let's go ahead and go into this comp right here. And you can see that it's only two layers. Um, one camera and a white solid that is a 3D layer. And if you look off to the right, this little pink square right here is the representation of a 3D camera. And these lines kind of show what the camera is seeing. And when I play this, you can see that these keyframes right here are represented by, uh, by these lines right here. And when we go ahead and play, you can see that the camera follows that movement. And as I'm playing this, if you compare the left and right, you can see exactly what the 3D camera is doing. And one thing I just found out, like right now, on the pretty much 10 minutes ago, is that this doesn't need to be a 3D layer, but there is a difference. So this one, it still feels like it's zooming out, but you don't get these cool 3D streaks. Um, it just, everything kind of feels more, it just feels different. Um, this one feels like the camera actually is flying through the stars. And when you take off the 3D, it kind of feels more of, it's being scaled down. Um, it's a real subtle difference and I don't think you would notice if you were just watching the final product, but yeah, I much I think I prefer this this way. It just looks a little bit better, more real. Um, and then after the camera stops moving, you have this weird 3D movement. And that's just the keyframes I put on for the twist angle um, on the CC ball action. And that I just, I applied that animation just so um, there's just constant movement among the stars. And you can see that over here in the final comp. Towards the end right here, the stars, particularly in this star right here, you can see that it keeps rotating down. And this subtle rotation among the stars, just uh, it's just another thing for your eyes to look at again. So the next thing I'm gonna cover is how I got the planets to rotate um, the sun and for this little moon to rotate its little pink planet. Um, it's fairly simple. Um, what I did was move the keyframe for each composition for each planet to the middle of this sun. But let me go ahead and show you exactly what I mean. So let me solo this layer and turn off transparency. And you can see that this planet right here, it has its own composition in this composition. And I went to this tool right here, it's called the pan behind. And here you can move the anchor point wherever you want. So if I move it over here, it should rotate around that point. But that's not what we want, so we're gonna move it back. And you can see that if I was to solo the sun, it will, it's gonna rotate exactly around it. And um, a good way to make sure that they're really aligned is that I went ahead and zoomed in. Um, and then I created these rollers by hitting Command R and then you could just go ahead and drag them down from the top. And uh, I just made two little points right here that aligned with the center point of the sun. So go ahead and zoom out and select the composition for the pink planet. And then from there, you can see that it lines up. And yeah, so when you click the pan behind tool, you can line it up exactly how you want it. If I'm ever working on a design and I need something to revolve around anything for some reason, um, this is the method I use. It's the easiest, um, it works the best, and you don't have to deal with any path animations. But yeah, um, I just keyframe the rotation over the whole duration of the comp, and yeah, it, it did the job. For the scaling up at the beginning of the animation, 
um, I went ahead and connected all of these comps that are planets to this one knoll right here and I just keyframed the scale for it. It was easier to do it this way because applying a scale animation to each and every comp is that's just not fun. If I would have keyframed the scaling for each and every composition for each planet, um, every time I want to make a change, I would have to go through each one and adjust it. That's just not the smart way to design an animation. So you connect all of that to one null, keyframe the null, and you'll just you'll save a lot of time. Trust me. So when you're creating an animation, it's really important on every layer you know where the anchor point is, because that can really change how you animate it and how it moves later on in the design phase. So let me go ahead and set up an animation and I can show you the difference. So here's a good example of how moving your anchor points um, can affect the way you animate an object. Um, on the one in the right, the anchor point, you can see it's centered in the middle of the square and the square on the left, um, the anchor point is on one of the sides. So you get kind of two different feels for it. And um, here, another thing that you can do is, so I can get two circles right here. And then I'll move the anchor point to somewhere. I'll move it to somewhere around over here. And then I'll create another circle on the same shape layer. And then let me open up the transform and then the position, I'll move it this way. And then you could put the anchor point in between both of these. And then when you rotate them, it looks like they're spinning around each other. So just by doing simple things like this, you can really change up how you animate. Um, you can stay more organized and yeah, you can just, you could work smarter and not harder. The last thing I'm gonna go over is how I create a depth in this comp without really using 3D layers. Um, I know the stars are a 3D layer, but they don't really contribute to the this method I'm talking about. So we're not gonna count that. When I was originally making this, um, I felt like there was something missing in the middle. Um, as you can see right now, it, it, it looks fine. It looks pretty cool, uh, but it's just really empty. Hmm. Well, I mean, space is empty, so. So I made these and I accidentally discovered this cool little um, effect that they brought to this whole thing. Once the planets pass under it, this is the part that really sells it for me. Um, let me turn up the quality for this real quick. <clears throat> so you can see that when the planets pass under the clouds, um, they kind of drop an opacity and it gives it this really cool, weird look to it. Um, you can see here, all these are just dimmed down, but let me go to another one. Um, so right here with this planet, Right now it's under the clouds. And then as we go forward, you can see that it has like this nice cool reveal. So when the planet comes out from under the clouds, it kind of gets brighter, the saturation goes back up. And this happens for almost everything that passes under it. The only thing that's not under this cloud layer is the sun. Um, it is under the clouds on the left and right, but they're not in the same area, so it doesn't really affect it. But yeah, I think that helped out a lot. It um. It made it a lot more interesting to look at. Also, here's a cool little bonus tip for you. If you highlight this show overlays and layers control option in the preview panel, and then highlight every layer you want to be shown and hit play, it'll come up with all of these little, like it'll pretty much show every property that's being animated and the outlines for them. Go ahead and show this to your friends. if You look a lot more advanced or you might look like a nerd just, uh, just depends on your friends. That's all I have for you guys today. Um, let's just go back to me a week and a half ago. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have any ideas for After Effects tutorials, just go ahead and drop a comment down below and I'll figure out how to do it if I don't know how. But until then, stay safe. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.